we are recording because we also post on YouTube. I think we could probably go live on YouTube at the same time, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, we are glad that you're here today. Today is the 7th of January, and I just feel that it's a wonderful day. Like I told you earlier, I was just, I was praying, talking about something else, speaking to the Lord. And that song, Oh, happy day. When oh, Jesus happy washed. day. And I knew that there was something else. <laughs> I, you know, it wasn't really that I'm saved. He was saying that this is a happy day. Not necessarily this day, but this time, because he's reminded me over and over and over again that don't look at the time, don't look at the date, don't look at, you know, the schedule, don't look at all those things. Just know that my day is here and my day is coming. And I know that there's going to be a lot of heartache, a lot of hard things coming that the world and even the people in the church um, will not acknowledge. Although, you know, just looking and scanning through things on YouTube, I see more and more people are speaking now about judgment. People that you never would have expected. People, mm. I was shocked. I looked I looked and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, now people are starting to hear it and it is coming. And it, 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 you know, this is like the tail end of it. And we know that it's a tail end of warnings about it coming. It's just going to be here before you know it. But he's also coming in a way <laughs> we um, would least expect it. I want to mention this just quickly because I don't want to harp on it. I don't usually wear a hat. I know this is kind of strange. I'm just going to mention it in case someone goes, why is she wearing it? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to copy me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just telling you. I um, I ate something that had food coloring in it and I was allergic to it and my eyes swelled up. They're almost like with this hat on, you can barely tell that they are swollen. They're almost, almost to a point where um, it's not something that would bother me if I showed it to you on the internet. So I'm wearing this hat because it kind of covers. So that's <laughs> that and I'm done with it. So again, we, we welcome you and we <coughs> Lord, we just... We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you that you are always with us. You never, never, never leave us. You never, never, never forsake us. And you never, 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 never will. You are so good. We exalt you. <laughs> we love you. You are always lifted high in our hearts, in our minds. Far above, even in even in the world, you're far above, but in our hearts, you are so far above everything else. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that comes close to you. He is far, 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 far. Yes, he is. He, you are great. You are great. You are mighty. Only you have the words of life and you speak life over us to those that will hear it, to those that do not. That's their choice. That is their choice. But we receive you. We receive your words of life because we know that as we drink of you, we will never thirst again. As we eat of you, we will never be hungry again. You exceed every need, every desire, every want within us. There's no one who compares to you. You are majestic. 
Did you see something? Yeah, it's, I'm seeing. I saw snow-capped mountain peaks, like real sharp. I saw to the left and to the right, but I was looking through his eyes high above. I saw the one on the left, the center, just fire. It looked like complete devastation just took it right down. The one on the right, then it was a snow-capped mountain peaks made a circle all the way around this one that was destroyed. And it, it completely surrounded it. it, has nowhere to go, and it's destroying. Like in the valley, this, mount, this mountain peak that was snow-capped got destroyed completely. And now it's just nothing but, there's like fire, there's like molten lava, there's like ashes, there's just utter destruction. And the white, white, they're all white now. The mountain peaks that were right on the are white on the right are now all white. And they surrounded, completely encompassed this one. Okay, so let me see if I got all that. There were two mountains, one yep. on the left, one on the right. Snow capped, yep. The one on the left was completely destroyed. Okay. It was completely destroyed. It's being destroyed. It's still destroying. Okay. The one on the right was snow-capped as well, but then the one on the right turned all white. Okay. No longer snow-capped, but all white mountain peaks, like a ridge, and it completely encompassed. It grew? It, like, in expanded around? Yep. This Encircled. Okay, well, encircled around this um, one that was being destroyed. Mm -hmm. And there was no coming back from that one that was being destroyed. No getting out. Well, that is good. You know, I don't know what you <clears throat> see. I don't know what you see in that, but, you know, if I look outside right now, I have a lot of snow out there <laughs> yeah. and the lord has spoken snow to us several times we've mentioned it before and whenever you know even today when i was looking out and i saw the snow i thought you know though someone's skin excuse me sins may be as red as scarlet you know his blood washes us and cleanses us white as snow we become white as snow white is a picture of purity mm -hmm. he's coming for a pure people he's coming for a people who love him he's coming for people who obey him and he there is a fear there is a fear of the Lord that they will know. Yes. Yes. Mm. And this is what we've been talking about in a nutshell. So what I what I can see from that is there are a people that through there are a people that are pure and holy, snow capped. They're they're like a remnant. Okay. So purity, snow-capped mountain. Then what ended up happening with that one mountain on the right, the blessings, him, you know, they, he separates right and left. That one expanded. So through judgment of what he's bringing onto the earth, he's waiting for repentance. He's waiting for people to finally hear what he's saying because he spoke he prophesied through people you know he spoke and he said it's coming it's coming repent turn to me choose we say this almost every week but people don't listen why are why am i still saying it 
if you're having a vision you. like that, you know, if you're having a vision like that, you are saying they're not listening. And some people will not listen until they've heard it and it happens. And when it starts to happen, the fear of the Lord increases and it starts to make you tremble inside to where you will change your mind. And instead of being stiff necked and hard hearted, you will bend wow. to his will. He and gave me a vision. He okay. gave me a vision. It goes along with what you're saying. Okay. But I shared this with you. I think it was last year. I saw these people walking around like they're walking on, on a busy street, like a public area, you know, just going about their daily routines, walking. There's a lot of people. <clears throat> I was just sitting there. I was watching these people. I could feel the, the ground vibrating. I knew the vibration was getting more and more intense, but people were still walking in their life they're still walking that same path that they choose to walk they didn't notice the vibration then it grew in intensity and it got even more and more intense then i saw a woman she noticed it and the in the intensity of the vibration got more and more and she started to panic mm -hmm. even though the vibration was still happening no one noticed it it grew and grew and grew and grew until someone finally noticed it but they kept walking in their own path what it reminds me of is um people are involved in their lives you know the scripture that says they're going to marry and give in marriage you know they just keep going about their lives so you're screaming repent hear what the lord is saying he's giving you a notice you know, the word if you if you don't read it in the word and receive that this is coming and it doesn't shake you, he's gonna shake you in another way because he will have a kingdom that expands around evil, the world, the 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 part that's being judged. So it says that there's a there's a remnant that's not in judgment because they have allowed him to work in their lives but as judgment comes people are turning from their wicked ways they are repenting their heart is opening to him they are listening and they are walking in his ways that's what the remnant helps him with they start to speak anywhere and everywhere he sends them and whatever he wants them to say. And when that happens, because judgment has already been there, they no longer shut their ears to it because they they realize he is the source of everything good. But people will be, this is pretty much what we're talking about right today, other than um, you know, later on with this bowl. Um, <laughs> there are people yeah. that will not repent until it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And some will not because they are so taken over by demons that they are pure evil. They are. Let me, let me, let me give this word that, that I have to give because it's. Okay. It, it, it's pretty much what. <clears throat> so this is what the Lord gave me. And I am I speak what he gives me. Why have you come? Have you come to seek a word? My word I have given. Did you not hear? Why have you come? Have you come to judge? To judge the very one who sits on his throne? Why? As you sleep the slumber of death, I have been well aware of your coming and going. Why have you come to taunt me, to mock me, to ridicule me? Do you not see? Do you not hear? You are at the foot and still you bow not. Your heart is a tempest, a dark storm that knows no peace. And yet you profess to know, to see, to hear. In your waking, you still slumber. You know what you know. You profess divine knowledge from my lips. 
You profess delusions from your imagination. Have I shown you? And yet you say, thus says the Lord. Who is your Lord? As the night grows darker, the new day begins. The sun of the day has passed. The moon fades. The stars fade. You have laid your head down. You have covered yourself in your bed. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands. You have passed judgment with your words out of your heart. I, even I, am the greater judge. I have sworn and will not relent. With the wave of my hand, the galaxy came into existence. My word has gone forth. Seeds have been planted. My seed, my harvest, is before me. The sickle is sharp, able to cut asunder all that I desire. The blood of the wicked is held in account. The blood of the righteous is cried out. Their pleas my heart has heard. Their pain I have felt. Their sorrow, their tears. I am that I am. I am aroused in my anger. Swift judgment. One to a person, a family, a city, a nation. Shall be rendered to them that which is due. The cup of my wrath has been poured out to all the nations. You have withheld me, now I withhold you. The blood of the innocent is on your hands. I hold you accountable. Just one second. I'm sorry. This, this is really sad, but it has to happen. There's some people that are going to be judged that, I mean, have already been judged because he said he's looked at every heart. And he, he's looked at every heart of flesh and every heart of stone. You know, even his own people. He's, he's judged all. And there are some people, I know for a fact, that are even preaching today that are arrogant, that are prideful, that slander, they sit as a judge and they are not. He has not told them to judge especially those that are his people. And he said, they are going to die. Mm -hmm. That doesn't, that doesn't make me happy, but guess what? What I am happy about is the fact that if you've treated him, anyone, in a way where he's not king and he's not Lord, and you don't recognize the very fact that he died for you to even lead the church and you think that you've been put on the throne to judge even his own, your days are numbered. There are some that will make it through and they'll become part of that white mountain. But there are some who will not. And 
their spirits will leave their body and their spirits will go into outer darkness forever. We have to be careful who we point fingers at. We have to be careful who we talk badly about, especially when we speak with mouth of flesh, fleshly work, works, words, meaning, you know, if you, he has mentioned malice, hatred, slander. He has said, these things are coming out of the mouths of those who are having the worst, the hardest judgment. And there is own, supposedly. Mm -hmm. So if we don't stop lifting ourselves up, and, and actually it's just, I, I have to say it's too late. I'm sorry, it's too late. I can't see anything else about it because it's just too late. This is where we are, and that word confirms confirms it. I cry over those that will not make it, but at the same time, I love him. Mm. I love him more than I ever could love anyone else. His blood was shed. He is the king. And filth, dirt, sin in his own house will be no more. No more. Done. So we were going to do communion today, but we're not going to do that. I'm sorry. Um, if later he leads us to, we will. So do you have anything else to share there, Mark? I cannot add to this or no, I got nothing. <laughs> So I guess what I'll do is I will, um, <coughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to change something here, but it's not working very well. Um, so I am going to speak about, um, let me say this, because I, I don't want this to be extremely heavy, although it is heavy. It It mm -hmm. is what it is. I can't do anything to change it. I It's done. You know, we've cried out over and over again. Many have cried out over and over again. And it's done. There reaches a point where it's just done. Um, But I, I want to talk about something that you know, there are children of the Most High God that listen to this broadcast. And that is something we also need to focus on today. Um, it's Anyhow, I want to talk about the vision that you had last last week. Um, just for a second. And um, if you watched last week, Mark had a vision of the Lord. He was walking and his people were inside of him, like in Christ. So it was a, it was a picture of that. Right. And mm -hmm. you, can, you can correct me, but he was walking through um, the sea like, you know, with Moses, the, the sea opened up, right? The Jordan and the, the um, Red Sea opened up. And, mm -hmm. but 
we know that on the other side of the Jordan was the promised land, you know, and we've been talking about the kingdom of God expanding, you know, the kingdom of God is in our hearts, but it's also something that manifests outwardly. And the Lord said that there are lands that belong to him that he has conquered and he will lead his people there. It doesn't mean you get in the car and you drive to, you know, <laughs> up to some desert or whatever, you know. Someplace warm. <laughs> <laughs> He's leading me to Hawaii, right? <laughs> but anyhow, that's not true. You just, you know, I would never, ever move without him telling me. Um, but what he did is he walked across you know, the, the, the river parted and he walked across uh, in the waters he saw people there were, it was the sea it was the sea the sea of humanity mm -hmm. and there were people crying out for help to the left i could see the left clearly okay so that confirms again what you said earlier and what you just said confirms that, again, the judgment that's coming is for the house of God and the world. Where any other time in history when we weren't, if you're not in the day of the great and terrible day of the Lord, normally the judgments come out only to the individual person that needs it or you know the church but today is a day when the whole world is being judged it's not just the church and so anyhow when he was crossing the sea and people were crying out you said on the left and the left we know typically speaks of judgment and other things but that's what he's been showing us judgment mm -hmm. so he just looked straight ahead and did not did not turn his head either way. He was bound and determined. He said, this is what I've said. This is what I'm doing. And he crossed to the other side with his people mm -hmm. in him. So he brought his people, his family, to... The promised land that is so what he was doing is he was showing us this is what i'm doing in this day through judgment i'm taking a people to the other side you know we were talking about crossing over we were talking about we were talking about going to the other side but i don't know that and i didn't listen to the whole thing again so i don't remember but i don't remember ever saying that that was the promised land or that that was the kingdom of God, or that that was um, the restored garden, you know, the vineyard of God. That's where mm -hmm. he's bound and determined. And he told you, he told you uh, quite a while ago, you know, you have to cross, you have to go. It's like, this is the time. This is the time. He's even said, he even said to, to you today something about this is the time, right? Mm -hmm. This is the time in history that the whole Bible has been pointing to. Oh, yeah. He said a time, times, and all time uh, is at hand and now is. Yes. So that's just like time, times, and half a time. That's like three and a half years have passed. So now that 1260 days, that 42 months, <laughs> three and a half years is officially over. So we are coming truly into that new day in its fullness where we cross over the river and he leads us. It's in him. We follow the lamb wherever he goes because we're in him. 
We're not mm-hmm. separate. He he hasn't, you know, there's a people that have been separated unto him uh, mm-hmm. and separated from the world and separated from Babylon church system unto him. You know, why all this? If you feel like, why all this separation? That's why. Because he's brought you to, he brought you, he separated you so that you are an overcomer in him and that you can go. If you didn't separate, you would be in the middle of Babylon confusion. It's very hard to be in the middle of words being spoken over you, even in church, over and over again, or partaking of things that do not please him. If you've gotten to a point where that does not feed me anymore, that is not tasty to me. Where's the Lord in it? You, If you feel like you've grown out of it, then he has done this for you. We think sometimes that we do it ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I tell him even yesterday. I told him this. This I could not have done any of this. But he said, <laughs> "You were obedient." Yes, and that's the key. But he also said to me because I've said the same thing over and over to him. And it's really true because he does the work. He mm-hmm. does the work, but we become that co-laborer with him by yeah. obedience, but also it's desire, you know, it's desire for him to know. Him. Oh yeah. That's, yeah. But I'm if just, you don't love somebody. You don't want to be obedient to him. You know, it's like, no, yeah, he, yeah. he is love. Yeah, but he also said to me that I gave him permission. Now, I know Mm -hmm. you had an experience with him in heaven, you know, that catching up where you even took an oath. You know, I believe a lot of things were taken care of right there Mm -hmm. for for his reasons, his plans and his purposes. Okay. For me, I had to experience it. <laughs> I had to experience it. And I had to be willing. And and believe me, I was willing. I am willing. But he said, You gave me permission. So you may you gave him permission when you took an oath. Because when you both, you gave him your rights and it wasn't because you, it wasn't because you were forced. It was out of love, you know? Yeah. I remember all of it. Just it's a tangible experience that cannot ever be taken away from me. um, Everything about him that I've experienced with him in him and through him cannot be taken from me. See, that's a good thing that it's edged on your mind because it saved you. And my heart. <laughs> your heart. And yeah. your, you know, um, mm-hmm. I'm sure that that saved you from a lot of heartache. You know, he took, can you imagine? I'm just, I'm just saying that in that experience, because it's edged on your heart, it took doubts away. Do you know? I'm not saying you never doubted, but I'm saying you were able to stand. This is what he does for us. Yeah, just you knowing what I know. Like, no, nah, you you cannot persuade me by an argument or with an argument. But see, that's <clears throat> with me, but I just went a different way. I mm-hmm. went, you know, not everyone is caught up. I had to go a hard path and I chose a hard path. He said, 
you chose um, suffering because I said, I want to go fast. I, <laughs> I want to <laughs> go all the way really fast to, you know, the throne room. I want to be in your presence, just like Mark. <laughs> you know, just like, <laughs> I'm playing with you. So with all of that said, when you say work, you know, work quickly in me, Lord, he takes you at your word. And he will take you to like on a little bit of a, you know, yeah, you go really fast and you go, what just happened? And he goes, remember, remember what you gave me permission to do, mm -hmm. you know? but it's all good. He works in each one of us differently, but mm -hmm. what you didn't allow him to do through giving him permission, not you, I'm speaking as a whole he will do through wrath. He will do through, because this is the day, you know, I wouldn't, you know, years ago, I wouldn't have been teaching this the same way that I'm teaching it today. And I have to look at it again. And I have to remember, even though the book of revelation is written to the church, he's judging the entire world. And he's showing examples of how his judgment comes forth. And so we'll just, to, but I just want to finish with that vision. So we walked to the other side and you, and you said that there were people that oh. it was like, go ahead. Yeah. Their hearts were just, I still, I feel it now there. It's a, it is like a, just a heart of true worship nothing but like thankfulness and gratefulness and worship 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 him yeah. you know it's like he is they didn't look back their hearts were so focused on him that was it their hearts were his yeah and you know what i can tell you that everything that i went through everything that you've gone through in his dealings, in his working, in his processing, in his um, leading and directing. What it has done, it has gotten rid of that old person. That, that old way of thinking, that old way of living. And you, you come into, on the other side, into the newness of life into the spirit, into relationship with him, into joy, you know, peace, righteousness, everything that the kingdom is. And because you've experienced what the enemy has done in your lives, you were born in a family, you know, either the family, you know, I had... I had family members and still do that are very religious. I can't even really connect with them, you know? And then I had exa an example, you know, of someone who loved the Lord. And I was very thankful for that. But there's a lot of religious people out there. And there's a lot of people that they don't understand the word. They, they don't understand it. And they don't understand how he works in you so that you can get to a place just like those people who were overcomers. If you're an overcomer, you overcame the world. You overcame the <laughs> effects of Satan in your life. Because everyone who was born into this world no matter what family they were born into, they still needed to get rid of world, you know, um, worldly ways, worldly lifestyles, even religiousness, religiosity. They had to get rid of it, you know. <sighs> it doesn't matter if you were born in a Christian family or not depending on if they were teaching 
the true word of God and you were living it as with an example of someone who was truly an overcomer, if you you had that, you're very blessed. But if you didn't, it doesn't matter if they brought you to church every week and every Wednesday night, it doesn't matter. You still have junk in your life that needs to be overcome. And when you can say, this does not have me anymore, that doesn't have me anymore, nothing has my heart except for him. When you can say that, there's great joy and thankfulness because only he can do it, only through the work and dealings of Holy Spirit in your life. It's by his spirit. It's not by anybody's works, power, might. It's by his spirit within you. Within you. Mm -hmm. Him alone. It's a people that do not deny the power of God within themselves. You know, they can say, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And it, he might be still working on me, right? <laughs> yeah. Come. He's <clears throat> coming in the flesh. And then one day I'll mature and I'll stand as a manifested son or daughter. <laughs> because he matured me. But if you hear... You still that, grow. You still grow. It's, yeah. You never... It's, when you said that, you reminded me of what he said to me yesterday about growing. Because we cannot, we've, Paul said, I, I press on to attain that, to keep growing in him. You never reach, if you think you've reached it, you haven't. <laughs> no, but you do reach a point where you know you are an overcomer. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what the church is supposed to do for you. The mm -hmm. church is supposed to help you by teaching his, his word by the spirit life teaching. It teaches you and you just, he works in you with that co-laboring of the, the teaching. And he, he changes you from glory to glory into his image and likeness and you overcome and things do not have, have a hold on you any longer. The chains of Satan have been ripped off. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just think of, I just thought of Samson, how he was like, oh. you know, he, <laughs> he, the strength that came to him yeah. was the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, and that's what happens within us. I'm not saying you'll never, I'm not saying you will um, be the Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> meaning him in the fullness, you will never. Mm -hmm. But he is our pattern. He is our example. Yes, Dad. <laughs> it's funny because I was talking about him talking to him about this earlier today you know my heart's desire has always been i just want you to have complete freedom in your temple this earthen vessel to live and move and have your being freely but he said i want you to as well yeah see so it's just so good he wants you to have a smile that never ends you know mm -hmm. he wants you to live the life that you were purposed to live before the fall occurred and what he has been doing is he's been removing the junk removing the dross removing the bowl removing 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 because you've given him permission so that you can get to the place where you can just go Ah, never going back. Because he says there reaches a point where there's no return. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, 
I'm no longer that person. I can no longer return to that life. You know, you know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So but it's a co, it's a really, it's a two becoming one, though you are like two, but you, you become one. And it's it just, I get overwhelmed because he always, he always shows me more and more. Like, yes, I give him complete control, but yes, he wants me to enjoy this with him, this life together. You know, it's not about just sitting there on the sidelines observing. It's like getting in there with him and let's go. Let's, let's keep moving. I'll lead you. I'll show you. <laughs> but we do, we do it together. And it's, it, it's not about works anymore. It's about life, about him and me and me and him. And I don't, I don't, I'm just, and him, spouting off, but. you know, you're speaking of your experience. Um, I remember someone a long time ago that said he just wants you to enjoy. I don't know if the ride, said, the ride, just enjoy it. And see, that's what you've learned to do. You know, you've learned to take every day. Well, he said a while ago to me, I would, I, I, I write. But he said, learn to live in my presence. Mm -hmm. So in learning to live in his presence, there is peace and joy and uh, happiness. There's a, it's not as the world gives. It's not even, the world can't even touch it. There's no, you can't even compare it. So don't even try. Peace I give you, not as the world gives. Mm -hmm. And rest. Yes. Yes. So just to kind of finish up with that vision, um, I, I also saw that, so they're in the promised land. They're people that are just full of joy. Like, cause he said, you know, in the kingdom there, there's no more crying, you know, there's no more, there's no more of the evil things, you know, it's, pure it's holy it's a place where you know that he's accepted you there's no you know you don't have to you don't have to do what works tell you that you have to do to be accepted you just be his child you know like you you just like you said obedience to your father you know relationship and so it's a place where life is totally changed. You're not who you were. You you are that new, you know, you're totally born again, spirit, soul, and body. You know, you are different. You, you're not just different. The old man is dead and you know it, you know? You can't even find that person anymore. And people will look for that person and they won't be able to find that person and they'll miss that person and they'll want that person to come back. But you say, you know what? You may want the person to come back, but I'm not even thinking about raising that one from the dead. You know, I have found life. I'm a new creation and you know it. And so what ended up happening in that vision is you also saw the linen turn into stairs. And then later um, you said it was like a linen sheet that turned into stairs and the stairs were easy to climb. And the, you know, it's funny because um, the, there's a place that in the Song of Solomon, it talks about the secret place of the stairs. And we know that, you know, he, he has shown us both about the stairs. Um, and you've had a number of visions about the stairs, but you said these were easy to climb. And that shows me that the Lord is right there. You know, he's still far above, but you're at a place where you're so close. You're with him. 
It's a new level of closeness. It's a new level of, you know, like union with each other and fellowship and relationship because it's like seeing him face to face. Mm. Like in the book of Revelation, it says, and they will see his face. And so he is still king and he always will be king. But he's in a closer place because heaven and earth come down. A new heaven, a new earth, closer. You know, that place in the middle that people always talk about where the enemy is, it's like gone. There's a connection between heaven and earth. So that's mm -hmm. what I was seeing. I just wanted to share that because there are people that are going to that, that new place in him. And so, but I want to, I want to also talk about what he wanted me to share for today. And, um, I've talked about some of it already I've talked about how the Lord rids Egypt out of our hearts and minds through the, through judgment and through wrath. Um, and he's leading us to a place where we repent of where, what we were doing, the direction we were heading. We change our mind, we turn our direction back to him and say, you are king, you are savior, you are Lord. Lead me. I'm done leading myself. And when he takes away the effects of Satan and world out of your life, then you go into the kingdom. So that's, that's, you know, those visions and what you spoke today um, helped with that. So what the, what, the bowls do like we're on the third bowl. I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. Um, because there are seven bowls. I could talk about more of the bowls today, but we're just going to talk about the third bowl and then we're done for today. But, um, what the bowls do is they are actually judgment on every thing that opposes God. And there, it's his wrath being poured out. Okay. So if I go to Revelation 16, four through seven, it says the third angel poured his bowl into the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, O holy one, who are and were, you are righteous, for you have judged these things. Because they shed the blood of your saints and prophets, they got what they deserved, for you gave them blood to drink. Then I heard a voice from before the altar reply, Yes, O Lord God Almighty, every Judicial, judicial verdict you make is just and right. So that's what we're going to look at today. Um, so we're on, on the third angel. We see a couple of things very quickly that the bowl was poured out into the rivers and springs of water. Okay, so last week with the second angel, it was poured in, into the sea. Mm -hmm. That is the salty water. That was the sea of humanity. This is blood being poured into fresh water sources. Okay, so rivers and springs of water, they became blood. 
We know that's a judgment. Do you have something? Okay. You know, it's a judgment. I know that people would say, that's the blood of the lamb. It's not. Why? Because they shed the blood of your saints and prophets. He gave them blood to drink because they did not listen to him. All of their water supplies turned into blood. The shed blood of those that spoke to him. Spoke to, not to him, but to the people. And they didn't listen. So we see at the very end that this is courts of heaven judgment. It can't be changed. And he has said, it's already done. So just looking quickly at these symbols. So I said the rivers, they're fresh. It's fresh water. It's water, it's water that you would normally bathe in, water you would drink, you know. But what, when we speak of rivers, we speak of a few different things. We speak of a river of life, okay. So rivers, when you say, you know, I've got a river of life flowing out of me. It makes, makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. So with that said, it's rivers of words. Okay. There, he is the water of life. So the river that flows through the th from the throne is a river of words that's crystal clear. So that, when we look at the judgment, we see that there are always two sides. If I show you these symbols, you see rivers, the river of life, and what he's saying is, this river's being turned to blood. Okay, I'm going to look at both sides, though, because it's good to know what the Lord gives us. He gives us life through his words, right? I mean, it can be tasted. But he's saying, you, because of what you've done, because you haven't listened, because sometimes people say that the Lord, and I would have said this years ago, because I had to unlearn some things that were taught that the Lord doesn't speak judgment anymore. That's what people have said. I, I heard somebody recently say, Lord doesn't judge. Prophecy isn't judgmental anymore. It doesn't judge. It's for encouragement, edification. And um, what's the, the third one? I can't remember off the top of my head. But it, they're saying it is to encourage you. It is to edify you. It is to, um, to lift you up. But the word of God is used to bring correction. That's what it says. It's, it's there for life. The Lord just doesn't pour out love without punishment because when someone needs punishment, he wouldn't be a good father if he didn't correct you. That's what we have to know. But see, I, I was taught love means, if I looked at this scripture, that it would be the blood of Jesus that he's pouring out on these people. It's not. Because there are people that cry under the altar they say, when, Lord? How long, Lord? How long before you avenge our blood? They had, they're beheaded 
under the altar in the book of Revelation. How long, Lord? How much longer, Lord? Years ago, I was taught that that, that that would never happen because you forgive everybody. And believe me, I have to have a heart of forgiveness. I have to, I can't, I can't hold unforgiveness unless he tells me, don't forgive that person. And he has told me that before. And he has said, I'm, I am judging them. See what they've done to me. That's the hard, cold fact of it. He said, I shed my blood. And that person doesn't care and never will. Don't forgive them. So I don't hold it in my heart so that it bothers me every day. But I can tell you this. I understand how he feels. And sometimes I feel the fire coming up within me because that's what he feels about what that person has done. And so, with all of that said, this, we know that every symbol has positive and ne negative sides. We know that Holy Spirit is in that river. He said, my words are spirit and they're life. So Holy Spirit is flowing in that river, you know, that comes out and speaks but we have, we have to rightly divide the word of God. And like I said, sometimes you have to unlearn things. If there's no life and only death, you have to unlearn that. If there's all love and no, if you say all unconditional love, he'll take you any way he wants you. Like I've said before, I mean, he'll take you any way you give him yourself. That's a lie. I mean, he will take you. He will clean you up. But I can tell you this, he's not going to force anyone to love him, to obey him. But what he does is he pours out judgment. And then you have a will. And you decide, am I going to go to the right, follow him, listen to him, repent, or am I going to be stiff-necked and say, no, I'm not done yet. The problem is you may reach a point where it's too late to be done. Um, we know that God is the river of life. He is. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. River of life. He is the water of life. You know, Jesus, Yahushua, Alpha, he met the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well, right? And he said to her, you know, if you knew who it was that gives you, who was asking you to give them water, you know, you would have water and you'd never thirst again. So I just paraphrased. And she's like, where is this water? Where's this water? He is the water. He is that water. Um, in the word, like living water, um, when I looked it up, it, it says that it's Z-A-O. And it means to live, you know, his words will, they're not only life, but they will make you live, you know, you will live a life and not, 
you know, be dead within yourself. It's related to Zoe. So they're the same thing. Um, just going a little bit farther. Speaking of life and the waters of life, um, in Song of Solomon, it says, you are a garden spring, a well of fresh water flowing down from Lebanon. Isaiah 12 says, with joy, you will draw water from the springs of salvation. Those are people, right? Those are people that have salvation. So just like Yahushua Alpha said, give me some water. I, I could give you water. She, you know, the water that she could draw out of him would give her life, right? And that's what he's putting in his people, this remnant that will go and, and help his kingdom expand so that that mountain becomes white and in circles. It grows. The white, the purity, the righteousness, it expands. It, it covers all of the mountain. It's not just the cap, the whole thing. Those people go and they speak to others and he's working in them. You know, he's working in the person that's, that is speaking and he's working in the person that is receiving and life is expanding his life. Um, John 4, 14, but whoever drinks of this water, I will give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a fount of water springing up to eternal life. John 7, 37, on the last day of the great feast, and that was the Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus stood up and called out in a loud voice, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Can you, can you imagine, can you imagine him doing that? You know, that was a confident person that knew who they were because who could do that with all the people around you judging you know what is this you know he was confident he was the son of the living god and he said come to me and drink because he knew who he was and he knew that life was within him and he was the life and he is the life and he's the only one that can give life. And that's what he was saying. John 7, 38, whoever be believes in me, as the scripture says, streams of living water will flow from within him. So I think we all see that there's a positive side and we all understand the fresh water. It's not the sea, it's the fresh water. So when blood is poured into the picture, it is death. It is a person receiving judgment. It's someone, let me just read this scripture, Jeremiah 2, 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and they have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. So when you read that, you know they're speaking out of their own mind, their own wisdom, their own opinion. They're not speaking his. And they have come to a place where they do not hold his water. They're, sometimes they're hearing, you know, you've, you've even heard words before about broken cisterns, people that they sometimes need another word, another word, another word, another word, because the, they go to a prophet or suppose they hear a word let's just say and it 
it does something in them in that moment. It rise, it makes their adrenaline rise up. Do you want to say something? I was talking to dad about that yesterday. Um, many, one of many things <laughs> about those people that go and they get a word from you, but they don't keep it. They just, they're, they're, uh, they, they hearing, they don't hear, seeing, they don't see. And what's, and in, what's interesting huh? about that is one time I asked him, what do you say to certain people? And he said, speak. And hearing you will not hear and seeing you will not see. Mm -hmm. And that's just the opposite of what people would think he would say because they have determined in their heart that this is this is what they want. They don't want the true water of life. They don't want to be a well. They just want a quick fix, go about their life, get another quick fix. It's a, it's a mind that's made up. So he says, if that's what you want, keep doing it. Mm -hmm. So judgment is being poured out on words that come from self, come from um, the evil one. If it doesn't come from God, it comes from the evil one because God is not worldly. Holy Spirit has no ounce of world at all. So he's getting rid of mixture and he's getting rid of anything that does not bring life. And in hearing, you will not hear and seeing you will not see because I'm pouring blood into your water. And now you have death. You can't see that. That goes with exactly what I'm saying, because now you will live what you've wanted. I've called you to come out of Babylon over and over again, even spoken to people. I know that you spoke to someone at one time and said, this is what's happening. And that person was offended because I haven't seen that person ever again. And I, I'll just leave it at that. So let me go back to this. When, see what's interesting about this, when blood is poured into the water supply, the Lord has said, so let me just say right now he's saying what people sow, they reap. This is a season of reaping what has been sown. So the, shall, the shallow cisterns, the broken cisterns are reaping what they've sown. The ones that have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, they now have their blood to drink. And what does he say about blood? He says the life of the flesh is in the blood. And he said in Le Leviticus 17, 11, if anyone from the house of Israel or a foreigner living among them eats any blood, I will set my face against that person and cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you to make atonement for your souls upon the altar. For it is the blood that makes atonement for your soul. Therefore, I say to the Israelites, none of you may eat blood, nor may any foreigner 
living amongst you eat blood. So why am I talking about that? Because these were given blood to drink. He said, do not eat blood, so therefore you don't drink it unless it's the blood of the lamb, which cleanses you. That's the only blood that you can drink. It's pure blood, pure blood of God. That's the life. He said, if anyone drinks blood, I will set my face against them, against that person. So what's happening? By giving them blood to drink, he's saying, I deny you. I reject you. He is judging. And he says, from this scripture, I set my face against that person. You're judged. If you shed the blood of my people, if you kill the prophets, if you cut John the Baptist's head off, there's blood involved. Drink it. It's death to you. It's stench. And that's what you are when you're against me and you've set your mind and you even kill the people. What happened with um, the scribes and Pharisees? The scribes and Pharisees, he said in Matthew 23, 30, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You build tombs for the prophets and decorate the monuments of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partners with them in shedding the, bloods, the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourself. You are the sons of those who murdered the prophets. They murdered Jesus Christ, not only physically, but every day they came to him, they tried to kill him. They tried to shed his blood. They were religious people. The religious people kill the prophets. The world just thinks they're silly. Or they just, they're just indifferent. But the religious people kill the prophets. Just like Saul Paul did before he was converted. It was his job, he felt. He didn't care if it was men, women, or children. If they were following Jesus Christ, they deserved to die. We know that everything changed in his life because he was a son of God. He just didn't know who he was at that point. So... With the blood, we know from the very beginning that the life is in the blood. We know that the blood, the life source is the blood. It's the blood. You know, we think it's we think it's the brain sometimes. We think it's the heart. The blood has to pump into the heart, but it's the blood that has life in it. It's not the heart, it's the blood. You know, the spiritual heart does. I'm just saying it's the he's saying the blood has life in it. Blood cries out to him. We know that with Cain and Abel. We know that Jesus has better blood than, than Abel. 
So atonement comes through the blood. And when we get to, we're almost done. Um, another example of blood in fresh water would be if we look back and we look at Moses and Aaron. And it was actually the first plague, water turned to blood. We can see a lot of the plagues that took place in the natural are taking place spiritually and they can't help but go into the natural again. I believe you will see water supplies that turn into blood. We will see things that we've never seen before. And hear things. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> it's just big things. <laughs> I read sign language. So this says, I'm just going to read um, a few scriptures, a few of this. It says, then the Lord said to Moses, this is in Exodus 7, um, 14 through whatever here, I'll see where I want to stop. But it says, then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he is going out to the water. Stand on the bank of the Nile to meet him and take in your hand the staff that turned into a serpent and you shall go say to him, the Lord the God of the Hebrews sent me to you saying, let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness. So, but so far you have not obeyed. Thus says the Lord, by this, you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, with the staff that is in your hand, I will strike the water that is in the Nile and I will shall turn it to blood. The fish in the Nile shall die and the Nile will stink and the Egyptians will grow weary of drinking water from the Nile. And the Lord said to Moses, say to Aaron, take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their rivers, their canals, their ponds, these are all fresh water sources, and all their pools of water, so that they may become blood. And there shall be blood throughout all of the land of Egypt, even in vessels of wood. So if there's a wood vessel, it's going to turn to blood. And in vessels of stone, they will turn to blood too. All of the water supply would turn to blood. So Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his, his servants. He lifted up the staff, struck the water in the Nile, and all the water in the Nile turned into blood. And the fish in the Nile died. And the Nile stank. It stinketh. So that the Egyptians could not drink water from the Nile. There was blood throughout the land of Egypt. But the magicians of Egypt did the same by their secret arts. So Pharaoh, Pharaoh's heart remained hardened and he would not listen to them. So the Lord said to them, Pharaoh turned and went into his house and he did not take even this to heart. So he didn't listen to what the Lord said to him. And all the Egyptians dug along the Nile for the water, for water to drink. And they did not drink the water of the Nile seven full days after the Lord struck the Nile. So for seven days, every water source was, it was turned to blood. And we know that that's because the Lord was saying, let my people go. And Pharaoh wasn't listening. So what did the Lord do? The Egyptians worshipped 
other gods. We know that Egypt is a form of sin. We know that it's a form of the world. We know Pharaoh is a form of the God of this world. And what they did is they actually worshiped the Nile. And I Googled this and I found just one of the gods. It was called H-A-P-I, which is funny, happy in a sense. Um, and this was supposedly a powerful Egyptian god who personified the blessing of the annual flood. So every day when Pharaoh went out to the Nile, he, it was like he was receiving from the God of the Nile, he believed, you know, answers like what's happening, you know, is the, the flood coming to the, you know, is it a good day? Is it what, I mean, this was his God. This was his God. And he prayed to it. He, they washed in it. They probably washed their clothes in it. They probably drank out of it. They probably used it for every thing that they did. And so the Lord said, let me show you who's God above your God. I'm going to turn this supply of blood, of water into blood. And Pharaoh still had a hardened heart from it. The water became polluted. So the water that comes out of people's mouths, even the ones that are preaching a word that doesn't line up with the Lord, it's a true word. It's like, it'll be like death. It'll be obvious that death is coming out of their mouth. That stench is coming out of their mouth. Many will die. And you know this. You've had visions about it. The Lord has said many will die. Some will just be judged in that way. So, the Lord has been speaking to his people. His people, first of all, that call themselves by his name. And he has, and I've said this before, he told you, I have to do what I'm doing because I need to get the attention of my stiff-necked people. And he is coming to them. He is um, showing them that he, at this point he has no more. He's not waiting any longer. It's time for repentance. It's time for change. Some will have the opportunity. Some will. He's just waiting for them to repent. And their, their water supply that comes out of their mouth, those that preach anything, any kind of message from a, a podium or a, a place of leadership that is not the true word of God, again, it's being judged. It's being judged. When they, I'll just say that their water will become undrinkable. The water that comes out of their mouth, out of self, out of self being exalted, will be undrinkable and people will turn away because it stinks. You know, there was one time this person that said um, they, they were a preacher and they said, you know, that someone had told him that when you come to us, you make us feel good. So many preachers come and they tell us how good they are. You know, you know when a person is preaching themselves. 
it stinks. And there are many people that listen to it and their eyes and their ears will be open because they will repent and they will recognize stink. They will recognize the blood of the prophets coming out of their mouth. When slander comes out of your mouth against the Lord's people, it's like blood will come out of your mouth and people will recognize people that loved gossip that put whoever on a pedestal because of whatever I'm not, I'm just saying these same people that talk against even the two witnesses that were listed in revelation 11 that were killed by people and they died in a sense. You can kill people that never really, really die. They're still there. But they but to to you, they're dead because of what you see. You think it should look like this when it looks differently, but you don't know what the Lord is doing. You don't know what the Lord is doing. In a people, you have no idea, and sometimes you have no right to judge those people. And you have some of some of the people that even listen to this broadcast, and I know it. I'm not pointing fingers, I'm just saying the Lord shares what he sees in people's hearts. So at this point, a scripture that the Lord gave is Ezekiel 3, 18 through 19. And it says, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, give them a warning from me. If I say to the wicked man, you will surely die, but you do not warn him or speak out to warn him from his wicked way to save his life, that wicked man will die in his iniquity and I will hold you responsible for his blood. If you warn a wicked man and he does not turn from his wickedness and his wicked way, he will die. He will die in his iniquity but you have saved yourself. So I can tell you, there's a river of life. I know we're speaking a lot of judgment because we've been told to. I'm not naming names unless the Lord tells you. Unless the Lord tells you to name names, then you name names. This is a serious time. I would never do, I would never, out of my own mind, my own self, start speaking these things. Why? Because, uh, it's dangerous. If you don't know that the Lord has given you permission to speak these things, you better not. But if you don't speak these things and he tells you to, their blood is on you. So I just I just say I'm free of anybody's blood. 
I've spoken things that out of obedience and out of love for the Lord. Because obedience means love, right? You said that earlier. I love him. I told him, I will do whatever you want me to do. Just make it clear and I'll do it. So I can tell you this. Blood is in your water if you do not minister life to the Lord's people and the sheep of his pastor. Blood is in your water if you do not exalt Jesus Christ, Alpha, Yahushua, and you exalt yourself. If you hold yourself high and mighty in front of the people and, and you, you come like you're coming in the name of the Lord and you're really coming in the name of yourself, blood is going to be in your 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 words. If you never care about maturing a people, it's all about who you are, what you're doing, you know, and you say, the Lord is doing this through me, but it's all about you, 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 you. The vessel. Blood is in your water. If you come to people with worldly wisdom, not godly wisdom, blood is in your water. If you focus on worldly events, day in and day out and day in and day out ministering to the Lord's people when he said he wants them out of the world and you're just keeping them in the world, blood is in your water. When you speak things that are not truth, that are full of mixture and lies, blood is in your water. When you preach things that suck the life out of people because they feel that they'll never achieve. You're holding them back. Blood is in your water. These are people that want to experience him. They want to know him. They want his love and they love him. And you are keeping them under your feet their growth stunted, the list goes on and on and on. And if you feel that this is you, repent. Turn from your wicked ways. I know everyone has been judged, but there's some that have received judgment unto repentance and some that have not. So if you feel repentance in your heart, go to him. If you feel true remor remorse for what you've done, go to him. You know, when Jonah went for judgment over Nineveh, we've talked about this before. He didn't want to go because he's like, I know you'll forgive them. You know, I know, Lord, I know who you are. <laughs> I know you are good and you'll forgive them. And so Jonah was disobedient, but the Lord did forgive them. I don't know who you are. If you're hearing this broadcast, I don't know where your heart condition is, but if you feel that you are sorry for anything that we've been talking about today, repent. Because every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Everything of world confess his name. I'll just say they'll bow to him and confess that he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. They will confess his holy name. Everything of world is being destroyed completely. 
in this day. In this day, it's the end. It's the end of what was. And if you are a person that does any of the things that we've been talking about, that you live in Babylon, where there is confusion and world and mixture, and the Lord has said for his people to leave Babylon, if you are holding his people, he is saying to you, let my people go. If you are someone who loves the Lord and you see why he's judging the evil in this day and you repent and you reject all filth, all lies, and you accept truth, Go to him. Put him in the place of preeminence. Show him. You'll give him everything. And I just ask, Holy Spirit, work in these that see that they may have to leave where they are right now, that time is so short if you're saying leave that church leave this group of people leave even family members at times and they will do it i ask you to break their chains break their chains of world and set them free Bring them to paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Lead them to your kingdom, Lord. And let those who've overcome and will overcome love on them and show them your love even as you show them. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so much that you won't leave us in a condition that is a result of the fall. You hate what the enemy has done. You hate what he continues to do in your people, how he's tricked them, how he set traps for them. And Lord, those who see and those with true remorse, those who turn from what they're doing and turn to you. I just ask you to let your people love on them. I ask you to heal their wounds. I ask you to listen. If they say, I want you to be my God, I want you to be my ruler. I want you over the world. I'll give it all up. If only I can have you. I 
I ask you to take just another look. Like you did in Nineveh. Just another look. Because we know your day is fast approaching and we're so excited that you are coming in a way that we've never experienced before. We are overjoyed and we want our true brothers and sisters to all be with us, together with you in the promised land, in the kingdom. Let us love them. Show them your ways, Lord. Teach them your word. Bring them to Mount Zion, your holy mountain, and let us worship our King, the King of glory, strong and mighty, the only one that is good. We worship you. We worship your majesty. You are great. You are worth everything. Everything. As we saw in that vision that, that Mark was talking about, the joy that's in the heart of the overcomers, the joy that springs up, the living wells within them. They speak life. They live in life. Their life is brand new. And that's what we want for everyone that will choose you over world, over mixture, over Babylon, over their own life and will give it all up because they hear your voice today. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are lovely. You know what's good for your people. Your ways are higher. Your thoughts are higher. You do all things well. You know how to take people from a place of death to a place of life. Thank you. Amen. Okay. So do you have anything that you want to share? All right, well, thank you all for coming today. And um, we'll see you next time. Nothing else to share? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>